vitally important. The Bible says in verse 2, there were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, watch this now, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately and that night they caught nothing. Can I say this as a cautionary tale about backsliding? It never only affects you. Let every parent in the building take heed. If you backslide, it is going to, in some form or fashion, affect your children. Let every church member in the building take heed. If you backslide, it's going to affect people around you. According, as a matter of fact, to the measure of your influence, It'll dictate how many people you influence. You say, what do you mean, Brother Mike? Well, think about this. Judas fell off the wagon and affected nobody. Peter falls off the wagon, and now you've got six other disciples being affected. Now, there is a little bit of a silver lining in this cloud. It's really, I really would like to preach this again next week, but from a different angle. Go back with me, if you would, in verse number two. And let me remind you that originally, how many disciples were there? Twelve, right? Judas died, so now there's only 11 left. But as you walk through verse number 2, watch me as I count the names. The Bible says, Then were together Simon Peter and Thomas, number 2, called Didymus and Nathaniel, which makes the third disciple of Canaan and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee. Always a reference to James and John. That makes five. And two other unnamed disciples makes seven. Now, I went to Southwestern Randolph High School, not really a, 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 a factory for geniuses, not known for, for putting out you know, doctors, lawyers, and astronauts, but my, my, my educational prowess tells me this. If there is 11 disciples left and seven are named right here, where's the four? Well, that's the real heroes in this story to me. There are four disciples, and listen to me now, we, we don't know exactly, God, God put it in a way to where you don't know exactly who they are because the two last ones that are there are unnamed, but there are four disciples that do not follow Peter in his debacle. Now that's the real message today right there. There are four men, unnamed here, listen to me now, that do not go with him. And can I say, those are the disciples you and I want to be like. It does not. And here's Peter. Listen, here's Peter, a man of prestige. Matter of fact, if you look back in verse number two, it wasn't just Peter that went on this excursion of backsliding. His buddies James and John are numbered into seven as well. That means the whole inner circle, the most privileged of the privileged. These are the three men, top of the mountain with Jesus, see the transfiguration. They went everywhere and saw everything. And they were three of the seven that ended up backsliding the worst. Now, can I say to you and I, boy, there is so much we can learn from verse number two and verse number three. Do you want me to tell you this morning why they made this statement? In my opinion, verse three, the saddest, one of the saddest statements in, in the scripture. It wasn't that Peter said, I go a fishing. It's that six other disciples said, we go also with thee. You know why they said that? Listen closely to what I'm going to tell you. The cult of personality. They had seen Peter labor. They knew he was one of the inner circle. And in their mind, they had so much admiration for him and affection for him. They stopped thinking with their head and they started thinking with their heart. And they had the ideology that, well, if Peter's going, I guess it's okay. And so as Peter walked off back to the fishing boat, six other disciples went with him you got to be careful that your confidence in the spirituality of others doesn't cause you not to hold them accountable for their doctrinal decisions and positions. 